Guys, we're back here with Chris Moore. Listen, uh, for one, as always, like, subscribe, share. And two, Chris, what's the point of mixing a dog? You know, you a mixologist. <laughs> you the guy who they come to when it's like, hey, I want to create a new breed or do this and that. You understand genetics and even what traits are going to be more dominant and potentially how to solve for those problems when you're trying to work on building a new dog. So, for one, how long you been uh, mixing dogs? <laughs> <laughs> Probably over there. I don't know, maybe 15, 20 years ago. <laughs> and what's the, what, what's the number one thing you said you learned from mixing, you know, this dog, that dog, the next dog, and the best dogs? Hell, some of the worst dogs. Mother Nature. Yeah. Explain she, that, please. Um, she's always trying to revert everything back to its original state. Um, for an example, we'll just take an English Bulldog to maintain that you got to keep going in that direction because um, she wants to create she wants it back to its healthiest form so when you say maintain what like the head part the breathing the what is that overall bulliness the you know the heavy heavy bone all that kind of stuff you know you have to maintain that it ain't something that you can neglect it is something that you have to take into consideration while trying to create something you have to take that into consideration we'll just take your breed the american bully if you don't if you don't keep adding your bully gene you'll end up with a pit bull again mm. and that's the best way i can explain it yeah. mother nature wants everything back in its rawest most healthiest form <laughs> so so what you yeah okay <laughs> i mean it's self-explanatory after that i would hope so but mm. you know we'll take um another breed of dog is yeah, i don't know i mean mastiffs uh, uh, they go tighter, leaner, tighter. They go more narrow in the front, yeah. so they can be more athletic. You know what I mean? That's just to get dogs to stand like this, you know, really muscular and really wide, is an abnormal thing. You know, when you see a human like that, you're like, oh, dang. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? But when you see a nice, fit human that look like he runs marathons, you don't think absolutely anything of it. Mm -hmm. There's a million of them, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. They don't stick out in your mind. No. But somebody like Kai Green or <laughs> that dude sticks out in your mind. Yeah, that dude, boy, you're like, that's, that's a. That's I mean, the best way you can explain it in human terms is. And we've seen the videos, so though. I know what you're saying. Cause Kai when you Green, add, how long did it take him to look like that? A lifetime. A lifetime. A, a good while. A good while. So, and he constantly has to work on it. Yeah. The minute he stops working on it, it disappears. It disappears. And they, and you know that's probably some of the funniest videos. They the TikTokers do it. They're like, "What happened to so and so after he <laughs> stopped competing?" That yeah. joker don't even look the same. But that's the body saying, "Hey, look, we we don't want." And, Mother and Nature. You know what's funny? It's like linemen. They become skinny dudes after playing football in college or in 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 the NFL. And then the the running backs they become fat dudes because they ain't got to watch what they eat no more. You know to stay super fit. It's like it's so funny because in all sports it happens so people again when you think about it bully specifically it's got some of the breathing stuff it's got some of the quite a few issues that we know of same thing with bulldogs yeah. we have issues too and, and and you use for me in oldies i use breeds for certain purposes yeah. if i want like for an example my breed is consisted of english bulldog bull mastiff pit bull not bully pit bull and an american bulldog um, I'm just giving you a perfect example. I, I bought two myself. You've seen them. Mm -hmm. I bought two American Bulldogs whose dad and moms are both hip tested in the threes. So I'm using the American Bulldog gene in this particular um, exist. I mean, um, example for good hips. Yeah. For hip health. Where am I else am I going to get it? An English Bulldog? <laughs> it's not. It's, it's not feasible. I'm not saying that there's not dogs who don't English Bulldogs who don't have good hips, but the majority versus yeah. The other side of the fence, yeah. it just doesn't make sense. And you know, bull mastiffs have good hips too, so I could use bull mastiff for good hips. I've done it, um, but you run into a different set of uh, problems. You get thicker skin, your shoulder set's different. So um, I'm just going to try American Bulldogs this time for my hips and go forward from there. And the same thing exists in all breeds. They mixed breeds to create a certain thing, and they used certain breeds for health. There you go. So look, what he's going to do now, people, is bring out a dog. We'll let's probably use the front yard. He's going to analyze and break down traits, what to look for, and what dogs are heavy, and how you would uh, basically breed to better it, all that other stuff. Yeah. Crazy muscle that everybody likes. You yeah. know what I mean? But she has good muscle. Um, she's a girl. She just recently came off of a litter. So, so. I like her. <laughs> No. 
Almost Tortuga. This one, you can see she's heavier English influence. Shorter back, thicker, a little bit more substance, a little bit, a lot more bone. Underbite. Underbite. Looks fat. You know what I mean? Yeah. She has that uh, impression that, that she's fat. I mean, she might be a little pudge. Don't get me wrong. Uh, you can let her off. So, she's a. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna breed her to her body type too close. Hey, <laughs> um, because then I'll just get English Bulldogs and I don't want an English Bulldog. I just want, when I use English Bulldog, I'm looking for the cobbiness of an English Bulldog. And, what, and the cobbiness, explain that. I don't know anything about Bulldogs. Uh, I don't know how to explain it in other, any other word, but. It's just the type, it's just it's square nature, square. short. Yeah. Like, almost like a I'm midget. Hat. <laughs> or little person, sorry guys. Just a short, thick, you know, skinny, like I asked you, I told yeah, you yesterday, you don't see uh, skinny little people. <laughs> yeah, you know there you mean? go. So that's just it, you know. When you use English Bulldog, you normally get a really thick, robust body. So do, to, to sustain the old English Bulldog, do you have to keep mixing them? <sighs> that's the age old question, man. Yeah. Yeah, it, that, that's the question that we fight within our breed, I believe. <laughs> You know, some people, you know, think that generational is the way. And then I, you know, I believe in going back to the well every now and then. Um, so, so I, I, I can't answer that for everybody. I personally like going back to the well to make good hip health. And once I try to go after the good hip health, sometimes I lose a little bit of type for what I want my dogs to look like. Um, for my understanding of the standard, mm -hmm. you know, um, same thing with, you know, American bullies, you know, as a judge, even I, I have arguments with people that you, you pick that dog because that's your style. No, that's my translation on the standard. Yeah. Um, you know, when I read the, uh, translation for oldies, it says words like sturdy. Huh. It says words like. Uh, it used to say bulky, stout, compact. stout, compact. When I hear those words, I don't think of uh, a skinny little person. I think of a thick little person. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't wouldn't consider. I'd consider myself fat, not stout. Mm -hmm. Where I'd look at you and say you're pretty stout, my man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I you get, I, mean? I get what you're saying. So, so I, you I, adding this oldie per se, and I mean, it's kind of been a rule of thumb at times, anyway. So you can bring something back in and clean up the other stuff you've messed up. So if you've got three components that make a breed and you've tightened it up too much, you go get basically the closest thing out of the breed and breed it back in and you'll get, you know, some consistency, but you also minimize any particular issues long term. Yeah, well, the goal is at least. I mean, they also say that mutts are the healthiest animals on the planet too, right? Yeah. That's what the books tells us. Yeah, I mean, it's so. the science. Science says, hey, and, and realistically, I mean, it must be living 17 years easy. Whenever you well, no, no, like that, and even in humans, you know, my oldest child's, she's a 50-50, you know. Uh, I say that because, <laughs> I mean, it's funny, she's you guys. An she's an F1. I guess you could say, but her mom has produced sickle cell with one of her other kids. My kid didn't have to be tested for sickle cell uh, because of the white gene. And, and I'm <laughs> guessing the other baby's black. Yeah. Yeah, no, because my grandma got sickle cell. We know that runs uh, primarily in the African-American culture. Yeah. And not only, to be clear. No, no, no. Yeah, I know that. But it's very <laughs> rare in white people. Yeah, yeah, very rare. But in the black folks, they got that sickle cell now. So, I, I mean, it's the same thing in humans. It, like, I'm not trying to simplify, you know, evolution or nothing like that. But same thing with dogs. The minute you mix, sometimes you get a healthier dog. Mm, yep. That, and that that's a whole new... So, you would say then, when mixing dogs... Basically, for one, know every dog that's in your breed. I understand, understanding what the breeds were used for is the importance, in my opinion. Okay. You know, and what was an American Bulldog used for? The shoulders, for me, the, you know, the head type can go either way. You know, some people are like, no, nah, I want an English Bulldog head, where I prefer a little bit more, less loose skin and more skull. You know what I mean? Some people like the loose skin and less skull. Yeah. I like more skull, more bone, so it looks bigger. <laughs> um, so in English Bulldogs, they bring you the bone, they bring you the squareness, they bring that, they call it, in horses, they call it heart hearth. 
the, the circumference around the rib cage, basically. Uh, some, I mean, some American Bulldogs have it, don't get me wrong. But if you would do pounds per square inch yeah. on an English Bulldog versus an American Bulldog, they probably have better heart hearth. Mm. You know, rib cage uh, circumference. So, you know, that's some of the things that you're trying to get out of the English Bulldog. The Mastiff was the bone, that really pronounced head type I would imagine they used it for. Yeah. Um, they, have, they also have good hips and their temperaments. Their temperaments yeah. are just so chill for the most part. Yeah. Um, I, I, the pit bull, I'm not, I haven't used it so. But it's in there somewhere. I mean, prior to me, but I, I mean, I, I don't, it has a bulldog in it too. So <laughs> I would imagine that's why he threw it in there. Or maybe it was a dog that he bought and already had it in there or something. I don't know. And you're talking about the way that this dog was originally constructed, yeah. was based with. Reconstructed. Reconstructed. Uh, so I can't, I've never used pit bull. Yeah. Um, I know that pit bulls notoriously have very steep fronts mm -hmm. and I can see that helping. Um, with an English Bulldog sometimes, you know, so <laughs> I mean I, I can see the logic behind it because I know how to mix dogs But I have never done it. So I can't give you a fair Answer with the pit bull to be clear. Yeah, the pit bull actual, you know ADBA pit bull. <laughs> I mean, I've used a bully once before just to see what would work or what would happen I mean, I got good results. I got cool results there you and go. it got it did exactly what I thought it would do stand up my shoulders a little bit more there you go there you go okay good stuff good stuff we're gonna bring the next dog out so, are you, you feeling? yeah <laughs> so she's more of a mastiff eb mix her face looks like a footstool <laughs> so she's thick short low to the ground but her head's kind of mastiffy looking ears see how they always flopped over hey got go fasters on <laughs> so I think in her mind she's going fast <laughs> yeah, she swear she fast too so <laughs> she thinks she's doing something man but she's thick you could can you see the bull mastiff and EB mix you know, I haven't looked at them enough, I'm being honest. I mean, part of this is just me making sure people understand that so when So there's look a difference too, remember this. There's a difference if the mom's an English Bulldog or the mom's a Mastiff. It makes okay. a difference. What's the difference? What's the difference? Please do tell. Your size difference, your feature difference. Ah. So, as you can say, you know, the Mastiff's coming from her dad's size because you can see she's short and, you know, like an English Bulldog, uh -huh. which is obviously her mom's an English side. I see. So you see how it how So it women, it. the female dogs will shrink wrap something per se. Yeah. The mom dictates, I don't want anybody to quote me on it, but <laughs> for over, for, for the most part, your mom will dictate the overall size of the litter. When I say size, I mean when they're grown, they're not going to be 400 pounds bigger than her. No. Or 400 pounds littler than yeah, that. Yeah, and that's even, let's say, if you had two massives and one was 80 pounds and one was 180 pounds, at the end of the day, you'll get like a 110-pound dog top. Well, you're in the same breed, so it's a difference. Okay. She can definitely throw a bigger dog. So this is, so this come, this is specific to mixing breeds? Uh, no, not necessarily. Meaning I mean, like when you shrink wrap it, though? No, 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 not necessarily. Like when you breed American bullies, if you bred a female pocket to an XL, uh, you might get one or two XLs, but for the most part, you're going to get in between. Yeah, that, four, that 15 to, to, yeah. to 17 you, inches. You're going to get about top. 17 inch tall yeah. dog. But, you know, if you breed an XL female to a pocket or even an exotic, you'll still get large animals. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, knowing where the mix is important too. <laughs> you know, was it an American mom? Was it an American dad? Was it an English mom? Was it an English dad? Those things come into play. And um, that same um, symposium that I went to for breeding, they told me about the five dogs in a breeding program. Uh, your pedigrees are, uh, are um, consisted of V's. Yeah. When you're looking at your pedigree, it looks like this. This is the dad's dad and the mom's mom. And vice, and then the little V's on the inside of that. Yeah. And so when I mix, I make sure that the outside V's are the same breed and the inside V's are the same breed. Interesting. Or vice versa. You know what I mean? Like that's what I do to make sure I get a consistency. Okay. So, so again, people, you know, when you're thinking about adding dogs, 
people have asked and messaged me about, hey, what happened if I mix these two? It's like, I, I'm not a mixed person like that. You know, I'm, I don't mix a lot of things. And if I do, then of course I'm coming to Chris. But even more importantly, I want to understand what I'm adding so that I don't subtract anything bad or add something that the dog doesn't need for one. Well, you just have to know the breed. What is it synonymous for? Yeah. You know, if we're going to use a basset hound, you might get a little <laughs> funky feet. You're going to get big floppy ears uh -huh. because every single one of them has that trait. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? If you're going to use a, a Dachshund hound, you might get crazy shoulders. Yeah. You know what's crazy is but there's, you're gonna a, get a long dog there's a guy who did, he did five generations of uh, breeding a boxer to a corgi. Okay. And the gene he concentrated was the tail. Because in the UK, they don't allow. So you guys want to read about, like, you guys want to go learn something? I'm behind the camera for one, but you want to learn something? There's a study on canine or, or canine genetics. There you go. And objectively, um, a guy concentrated the gene because in the UK, they do not allow the dogs to get their tails docked anymore in certain parts. It's, like, it's inhumane. So what he did was he, he got a long-haired boxer, and he created a Grand Champ line with all the tails coming out with that whatever gene he concentrated and got... Basically, boxers that don't got to get their tail dog, which was interesting because you think, damn, he still used the corgi. I don't know why, but he did it for his reason. Yeah, and he documented the whole thing. So you see the long hair boxer. You see all the dogs that he made over the, the, the six, five generations. And you say, dang, then he like every dog came out with that tail. That's nuts. Gotcha. So you, you, this is a, this is another guy here that just walked us through. Good old massive look. Can we try to suck her up? Face. Yeah, yeah, if you can. That's another thing about their temperament. They're just very submissive, so ah. it's hard to stack them. Just... That master's a chill dog, people. Oh, oh. she's moving like a roly poly. <laughs> she's not gonna stack, people. She's not gonna stack. But but we can see <laughs> we can see it in her face. She's a happy dog. Say it, That's the most important part. She's a happy dog. And what color is this dog? It's blue dog. Okay. okay. So, the trick to mixing is know what you're looking for. Understanding traits. Understanding traits. Understanding the traits that you're, of the breed you're using. Understanding the traits that you're trying to correct. Understanding the traits that you're trying to extract. It's just knowing traits, it, you know, and, and then not only that, some dogs, they just don't produce those traits, <laughs> even if you're trying to use them. There you go. There you go. That part too, people. You're going to get it wrong more than you get it right, and that's in life. But when you do get it right, look. Tighten Stick that thing it, up. Yeah. Stick, Stick to, to it. Because <laughs> you, well, you bring one bad thing and it'll be the next three, four years trying to fix it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, stay tuned, take care of your dogs, man, and thank you for the info.